Hello, we're going to learn how to use Sewer CAD from Bentley and in order to do that we're going to start with the quick start lessons. So I've already opened up Sewer CAD and one of the first options you see over here is quick start lessons. So when I do that I have the quick start lesson. We're going to be doing lesson one creating a schematic network and we're going to be laying out this schematic network and following the steps here so i'll be illustrating what's going on the and making comments on what items you need to click in the sewer cad model in order to get things to work uh, but if you want to refer back this is where i'm getting this information we'll be following along with this if i go back to my bentley and now i'm going to come over here to file i'm making a new one it's initializing it so it's now got a new model over here so what i'm going to do is now called untitled i go file and save as and i'm going to have it as quick start oops lesson one and I'm going to click save and now I have that in this tab over here for the schematic network we're going to be laying out I'm going to come over here to file and I'm going to look at hydraulic property uh, hydraulic model properties clicking in here I'm going to name it quick start lesson I'm going to have the engineer be me. And the company is going to be Gateway Technical College. So now I've finished laying that information out. And I'm now going to look at the tools I'm going to be using and make sure that they're in the proper system. So over here, I'm coming down to options, clicking on those. Now, what I want for the drawing is I do not want it to have it scaled. I want it to be schematic. So I'm going to click that as an option. Over here, my units, I want to have those as being metric. So I'm going to have the choice between US and metric. So I'm doing that. And I come over here to resetting my defaults and make everything metric. So now all the items I'm going to be entering in are all going to be in metric. So now I've done that, I can click OK and can begin to lay out my schematic. To begin laying it out, I'm going to come over here and I have a little drop down menu. I want to pick a conduit. Now if I come over here and do a right click, I am have the option selected as being a conduit and a manhole. So when I click over in here, the first thing I have is manhole number one. We're going to have next is a wet well and a pump. So I'm going to come and select that. I now have a wet well. Then I can come over here and place it. So now I have my wet well placed. Now this is a transition between gravity and pressure systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a right click. And what I need to do is make a change so they have pressure pipes selected. So I come over here and select that. I'm going to do an additional click over here. And what I want to have is pump. So now I can place my pump from the wet well. So I'm going to come over here and place my pump. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my junction that I'm going to select. So I do a right click again. 
and I want a pressure junction. So now I click there, and now I have my junction. And what I want to do now is transition to the outfall. So what I'm going to do again is a right click, and I have my outfall, and I'm going to place it. And now I have the first leg of the schematic drawn up. Since I have it drawn up, I'm going to come over here and finish it. Now what I need to do is put my second manhole in place. So I'm going to do a right click over here. And when I do the right click, what I want to do is I want to select conduit again. And another right click, and I'm going to put in a manhole. So now I have my manhole. Now I have manhole number two was placed. Now that I have manhole number two placed, what I want to do is I'm going to come over to here and have a transition. So what I need to do is click over here for transition. Click over in here. And now it's going to ask me if I want to split conduit number one. And I'd answer yes to that. And now I have split conduit number one. It's conduit two, three, and four. So now I'm going to say that I'm done. So now I have my schematic all drawn up. So now that I have it drawn up, what I want to do is I want to change my labels so that they match up with what's in the quick start lesson. So this is going to still remain CO1, CO2, and CO3. So if I double click in here, I'm going to now change my label. Here is, I want to make this CO1. And what I could do is I can come down here to the drop down menu afterwards and I could have come over here and now I have CO3. I'm bringing that up. I'm going to change the label on it to CO2. And now what I'm going to do is hit escape a couple times to get rid of that box. I've got CO1, CO2, and I'm double clicking on this one over here. And instead of being labeled CO4, I'm going to come in here and change the label here to conduit number three. You'll notice that what I was doing is I had all the conduits, all the elements that I've put in this drawing are part of this little drop down menu under the properties. So I'm going to get out of this. And just to show you that I do have everything renamed. And what I can do is stretch these out so that you can see the labeling a little bit better and get things tidied up a little bit. So you can see them for the remainder of the video that I'm making over here. So you should see now that this matches up with the drawing that is in the quick start lesson. We have manhole one, two, conduit one, conduit two, conduit three. We have our wet well, our pump, pressure conduits from the wet well on out, and we have our outfall. And what I'm going to do is to make this a little bit more readable is do like that, Hit escape to get rid of that. And now I have my schematic laid out. Now I'm going to do is start to begin giving the properties to all the conduits, the pressure pipes that I have so that it gives me all the information I need when I go ahead and model it. Now the information I'm going to be putting up there, as I come down over here, the quick start lesson, this matches up. 
uh, come down a little bit further. And this is where I'm going to be entering data. So this is coming from tables over here. I have my outfall, the ground elevation, the rim elevation, the invert. It's a free outfall. I have manholes number one and two with their ground elevation, the rim elevation, the invert elevation, etc. You can see they're going to be one meter or a thousand millimeter diameter. So all the rest of this information I'm going to be entering in comes from this portion of the quick start lesson. So again, you find that in the quick start lessons, lesson number one. Now coming back over here, I'm going to begin entering that data. Now to pick up the elements over here that I'm going to be entering the data for, I can double click. And you see I have now my properties box come over here. And I'm going to resize that so it's more readable. So now I have my dialog box open for my outfall. I'm going to be putting in those properties that uh, were specified in the quick start lesson, which is a elevation above the ground of 16 meters, rim elevation of 16 meters, and my invert of 14 meters. So we're going to be going to do that. So to start with, my elevation of the ground is going to be 16 meters. And this is already given my set rim to ground elevation. And I do want my rim elevation to be at the same height. So I'm going to leave that alone. My rim, uh, sorry, my invert elevation, I want to have that being 14. So I hit enter. And now what I want to do is I want to specify that boundary condition type. I want to have it to be a free outfall, which is already selected over here. So I should be okay with that. And now what I want to do is I want to set the information, the input to data for my manholes. And now I'm coming over here to manhole number one. And I could have just double clicked on this, but I could also just use this little down arrow. So now what I need is I need to have a elevation of 11.1 .1 for both manhole number one and two. The rim elevation is going to be 11.1 .1 for both. So I'm coming down here. I have my ground elevation, which is going to be 11.1. .1. And my rim elevation is going to be the same thing. So I click true is OK. My invert elevation is going to be 9. So I do want to have it be a circular structure. The diameter over here is going to be a thousand. My head loss method is going to be set of absolute. I'm going to come over here and I want to be standard. And my head loss coefficient is going to be 0.25. So now I've entered all the information from table 2-2, the manhole input data that would be on the quick start lesson. So I'm now I'm finished with manhole number one. And I want to enter basically the same information for manhole number two. So I come over here and I have manhole number two that comes over here and displays in red. So I come down over here and get to the spot where I have my information. So my elevation for the ground is 11.1. .1. I'm going to have my rim elevation at the same height as the ground. My invert elevation is going to be 9. My diameter, I want to pick it as being one meter or a thousand millimeters. 
So my head loss method is going to be standard and the coefficient is 0.25. So now I have entered that information for manhole number one and two. It's going back to manhole number one. Just all the information is the same. So I've completed now manhole one, two, as well as the outfall. So the data, the data that I'm going to put in now is going to be on the transition. So I come over here to T1. And from my transition, if you look at table 2-3 in the quick start lesson, lesson number one, I want to have a elevation for the ground of 12. The top elevation is being 11 with an inward elevation of 9.2 and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that information in here. So over here, my ground elevation that I want to put in is going to be 12. My elevation of, let's see, my invert is going to be 9.2. And what I want to do is my elevation for the top is going to be 11. My transition length is going to be 1, not 1 1.5. So my head loss method is going to be, again, is standard. And my head loss coefficient is going to be 0 0.5. I hit enter, and now I have all the information that I needed for uh, the information from table 2-3, and now I've completed the transition. The next item up on the quick start lesson one is going to be on the wet well. I need to have a base elevation of six, the minimum elevation of six meters, the initial elevation of eight. So we're gonna go enter the data from table 2-4 on the input information for the wet well. So now I come over here, my wet well is designated W-1. So now I click on that. Now here's all my information. And now I'm going to be putting in my information on the operating range, my elevation on the base. Initially it's going to be here is six. I have my minimum elevation is going to also be six. And my initial elevation is going to be six. So minimum is Six, my initial level is going to be eight. My elevation maximum is 10. So what I'm looking for now is the physical information about this, I have a constant area circular, so it is a circular section. The diameter is going to be three. And my ground elevation is going to be 10.5. Hit enter. Now I have all the information that was contained on table 2-4. So I'm done with that. And what I'm going to do now is put together a pump curve for the pump that I have over here. So I'm coming down over here to P1. 
oh, that's PMP1. Okay, there we go. Pump 1. Now I'm going to be giving it the information for the pump curve. So if you notice that uh, in your quick start lesson, and it says that you're going to open up the pump's definition in the components menu and give it the information for the pump curve. So I'm going to get out of this and come over here to the components and select pump definitions. And here's my dialog box that I'm going to now be able to provide you with the pump curve information. So we're going to start off here. And then what I want to do is I hover over these. It tells me what these are about. So this one is for a new pump. I'm clicking that. And I'm now going into the information contained in table 2-5. And the pump definition I want to have at a flow of 0. Well, I'm going to have a head of 5333 my design is going to be 0 0.25 with a head of 40. And maximum operating is going to be a flow of 0 0.5. And zero over here. But you'll notice that in table 2-5 in the pump definition, it gives you the flow rate in cubic meters per second. I have this in liters per second. So I'm going to do is I do a right click, and I want the units and formatting. And now instead of liters per second, I want to have this in cubic meters per second. And I click OK. So what I did again is I did a right click, and I got my units and formatting. Now this all set this back to zero again. So this one is re-entering the information. This is going to be 0 0.25. This is 0 0.5. And there's my pump curve. So these stayed the same because I have my head in meters, 53.33, 40, and 0. So now I've entered the pump curve information. There's just one thing that I did not do over here for the pump curve. Yes, this is gradually varied flow. I want to have the standard three point and it appears I do have the correct one selected there is a little bit of difference between the quick start lesson on some of the terminology and what you actually see in the program itself so now I have this I've got my information on the pump definitions and I can now close it and what I'm going to do now is going to double click on the pump to enter the properties and I screwed up and I picked the wet well but I can come over here to my pump again and now I have my properties I'm going to expand the box here a little bit so my pump data that I want is I have a Elevation for the ground of 7.5 meters and elevation of the invert of 7. Point, uh, sorry, 7.8 meters for the elevation of the ground. The invert elevation is 7.8. So here I have my physical information. My elevation of the ground is going to be 7.8. And now I have my invert elevation is 7.8. And hit enter. Now what I want to do is come over here, come down over here. I have pump definition number one, 
which is the pump curve I just put in. So now I should be finished with the pump. You notice that I have pump definitions. This is what I had put in previously. So I should be ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is I have to enter information for the junction. I can come up over here and I'm selecting my junction. And now you see that that's highlighted and what I need to enter in if you look at the information for the junction that I need to have a elevation of 13 meters and a ground elevation of 14.2. So here I have my elevation of the ground is going to be 14.2. My elevation is, let's see this, 13 meters. So now I've completed that information. What I'm going to do now is look at entering data through flex tables. So I'm going to get out of this and I will be looking at in a moment is the flex tables. So I'm going to do in order to see that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to double click on conduit number one as it describes in the lesson. And now I have this up and I'm going to set the invert to start and set the invert to stop fields to false. So I'm going to scroll down over here and be able to come up with that information. You see that I have right now set invert to start as true. I want to make it false. And then the other item that I need to do is set invert to stop fields to false. So I've done that. And I'm going to repeat this for conduit two and three. This is going to allow me to change those fields in the flex table. So now I have conduit number one. I'm coming over here to conduit number two. And set invert to start. I'll make that false, the inverse to stop, making that false, and the same thing for conduit number three is setting those to false also. So I now have finished that and I'm going to get out of here and to access the flex tables, I'm going to click the view up in here and be able to select the flex tables. So here's the view and I want to select the flex tables right over here and now I have it for the conduits, the manholes and a bunch of other items so we'll be working on those in a second. So the first one I want to work on is the conduit table. So I double click on that. This brings up information about conduit one, two and three and the information I've sent I've already put in. So now we're going to begin working on these items. And for those of you that are looking at the quick start lesson, this is data, the uh, input data from table 2-7. So for conduit number one, I have a inverse start 
of 10 meters, invert stop of 9.5. I have a conduit shape of circular pipe. It's going to be of concrete with a Manning's friction factor, the end factor of 0 0.013, diameter of 200 millimeters, and I'm going to specify the length as being 100 meters. So now I'm going to begin putting that information in. So here's my invert start. And I want to have it as being 10 meters. And now I have my invert stop as 9.5. And I'm specifying the length because I, instead of having it scaled, I actually have this as being schematic. So I have over here is my user defined length, which is going to be 100 meters. And now I have over here is I wanted to have it as a circular pipe. And my diameter, I want to have it as being 200 millimeters. In fact, all of my pipes are going to be 200. So I'm going to be entering my data for the other conduits over here for conduit number two should be nine, whoops, 9.5. And for conduit number three, this should be 10. Come back over here. This is 9.5. This is going to be 9.1. Again, I'm using the data from table 2-7. So my length for this one is going to be 70. This one's going to be 100. And I already changed these all to 200 for the 200 millimeters for the diameter. And then I already have the Manning's friction factor of 0 0.013. So I've entered all the information I need to here. Now you'll notice that one item I don't have over here was the material. So I'm going to come over here where it says Edit. And I click on that. This has available columns. I could add additional information in if I want to. So I'm going to scroll down over here. And I click on material. I'm going to add that. Now if I want to move that up, I'm actually going to move that up over by the Mannings. And I'll click OK. And now I've got my material. I should be able to have a drop down menu over here. This one is being concrete, which was what was specified. So for all of these, I'm now going to do concrete. And now I've got everything entered in that was specified in table 2-7. So I'm going to see, I don't believe I have anything else I need to over here. So I'm going to get out of this flex table. And the next thing that I want to do is the pressure pipe table. So now I have that information up. I'm going to be putting in information there. And for the pressure pipe, I'm given information on the invert start and stop, the user defined length, the diameter, and the material. But I don't have the material over here. 
So what I need to do is put some of that information in. And let's see, do I have the invert start and stop? So I have very little of the information over here. Now if I want to have user-defined length, which I do for these, so P1, I have a user-defined length of 1. Over here, I have a user-defined length for pipe number 2 of 200. And then the last one over here is going to be 100. All of my diameters are in millimeters, or it could be 200, 200, and 200. So what I'm lacking here is the invert start, invert stop, and also the material, because you see if I scroll across here, I don't have that. So I'm going to come over here to the edit. Oops, that's a zoom in. Here's my edit. I want to have is invert start, invert stop, and material. So there's my invert start. Move that over. My invert stop. Move it over. And then also, as so I want to come down to material and move that over, click OK. And I'm leaving this at the end. So I have this information here. Material is going to be ductile iron. So let's see, ductile iron. And ductile iron. And ductile iron. So my invert stop is 7.8, 13 and 14, 13, 7, 8. And this one over here should be a 6 for the invert start. I'm going to have to figure out why that one is grayed out. Uh, sorry, because the yellow boxes signify things that can't be changed. And the white boxes are information that can go in there. So I'll be dealing with that here in a moment, trying to figure out why that one is at 12. Hmm. See if I can... Set invert to start. Let's see if that's going to those one should be a six. So you notice I went back into edit and got so I could set the invert to start and Pressure conduit number one at six as the table two dash eight in the pressure pipe input data specifies. So, what I'm going to do now is I can get out of this, and what I'm going to do is look at the conduit. So, I'm going to double click on conduit number one to open the properties editor. For those of you that are following along, this is uh, the last part of entering the stuff in the flex tables. So I'm going to double click on CO-1 and conduit to open the properties editor. And what I want to do in here is change has user defined length to true. And I'm going to a value of 100 in the user defined field. And I repeat this process for conduits two and three. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the instructions tell me that I need to set to 100. 
So looking for has user defined length, set it to true, which it already is, and the length is 100 as has been requested. So repeat this for conduits two and three using the same information that I have that came out of the tables in the quick start lesson. So now I'm going to conduit two. And let's scroll down there. Has user defined the length, true, and it is to 70. So as it's required, I do have it at 70 and should have this already all done for conduit number three. Yes, it's appropriately done. So I should have that all done for all the conduits. It asked me to double check on things for the pressure pipes. So I'm looking over here. User-defined length, that is correct. And user-defined length. Oh, here we go, yep. That one is correct. And for P3 is user-defined length. I'm all good on those. So now I'm going to be entering the infiltration data for the pipes. So I'm going to do over here is go to conduit number one. And it wants me to go down and I have the infiltration type. This is table 2-9 and conduit infiltration data has link length as the infiltration type. The loading unit is meter, and the infiltration rate is going to be uh, in liters per day is 0 0.25, 0 0.05 for conduit 2, and so on. So I'm going to enter that data in here in a moment. So coming down over here, infiltration type. What I need to do is have it to be link length. Or actually, this one is going to be pipe length, so infiltration loading unit. I want to have that as being meter in the infiltration rate in the units. I don't want it to have it in cubic meters per second. I'm going to come loading unit. So this is giving me the infiltration rate in cubic meters per second, where I want it in liters per day. I'm going to do a right click in this box, units and formatting, and I have my units as cubic meters per second. I don't want that. What I want is liters per day. And let's see, liters per day. And I'm going to be okay with that. Let's see, flow additional. This one should be 0 0.25. So I'm putting in here is the infiltration rate per loading unit as 0.25. I'm good for that. Now I'll kind of do it number two. I'm going to come down here and select. And here's my infiltration. So I'm going to pick that one. I want it on pipe length. My infiltration loading unit is going to be meter again and do a right click over here. Units and formatting. I already have it liters per day which I'm fine with. So that was okay. And what I want to do is have this one as 0.05 
And now I come down to conduit number three. Oops, it's pipe number three, conduit number three, infiltration. I'm going to have it as on pipe length. And then my infiltration loading unit, I'm just going to do, this is liters per day, so that one's already done correctly. I want this one in meters. And my rate is going to be 0 0.03. So I should be good on that. So now I'm going to look at steady state loading. In sewer CAD, your loading is categorized either a sanitary load or wet weather load. Sanitary, dry weather loads occur independent of the weather, such as wastewater from a subdivision. Wet weather loads, such as pipe infiltration, inflow at different nodes, are related to the rainfall in the area. This part of the lesson deals with sanitary loads. Sanitary loads, again, are going to be what flows from different types of <coughs> um, businesses, homes, subdivisions, that type of thing. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to come over to the components menu. And I'll actually, as I can get rid of my flex tables, components, and I'm going to select the unit sanitary dry weather loads. So components and unit sanitary dry weather loads. And now I have this up and I can put in the discharge the wastewater that's going to be coming in from various things like subdivisions. So what we're going to be doing is coming over here, we have synchronization options. I'm going to click a little down arrow and we're going to import them from the library. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this and expand it some more. So you see I have I can have from an airport, apartment buildings and such. Now the quick start lesson we're talking about, it wants to have from apartments. So I'm selecting that. Home average and home better. I have a residential hotel. Resort, a school or other things here. So coming down here to resort and a medium school, a shopping center per employee. And the last item I need to select is on a theater. And once I'm done, I can click select. Now you see I have all these already entered in here. So what you see is that here's the loads that are put in there. In the graphics that are in the Quick Start Lessons, they have it on the Better Home. If I click on that, then I have 310 liters per day, which matches up with the graphic. Now that we've done that, we're going to match them up with the nodes in the drawing. So I'm going to now close out of this. And what I need to do is I come over here to the tools. And what I'm going to select is the sanitary load control center. Right over here. So it's this is okay. We're going to, it says cancel and do support unavailable in Sanitary Loads Control Center. Are you sure you want to continue? So I'm going to go yes. So now I'm going to match these up. So I have, here's a manhole tab, catch basin, wet well, pressure junction. So over here is new. So on the 
I'm going to select the new tab and select initialize unit loads for all elements. So here I am. I'm getting the initialization of the unit loads for all elements. So I'm going to sign items over here. Sanitary load for manhole number one. I'm going to select department. And then I'm going to over here for the loading count is going to be, what does it give me is 2000. And in manhole number two, I'm going to select the resort. And I again have a 2000 in there. So I'm going to do now is come over here. I'm picking this one. I'm clicking new. And what I'm going to do is add unit load to element MH1 or manhole number one. So now if I come over here, you see I had apartment selected previously. And now I'm going to have a, another one over here is average home. And from the quick start lesson, what do I need to have for my number of people there? And that would give me 3,000. Then I'm going to come down to table 2-10, which is a sanitary load assignments. I'll be entering data over there. So for manhole number one, I have the other items over here. I have to add in an average, uh, sorry, better home, a residential hotel and theater, for the wet well uh, and additional items, you'd just be looking at table 2-10. So what I need to do is I have for my wet well, I'm going to come in with new, initialize unit loads for all elements. I just have the wet well. My wet well, I'm going to have a theater with 200 people there and I'm going to come over here add a new load element for my wet well which is a shopping center And I have shopping center per employee, and that is going to be unit loading count of 50. Then I'm coming over here to my pressure junction, new, and initialize unit loads for all elements. I have my sanitary load for the junction. It's going to be the medium school with it being 500. And let's see, I have for my manholes, I should have for manhole number one is better home and a residential hotel. So I'm going to do is I have apartment and average home, but I have to add in the residential hotel. Oh, so that's for manhole number two. For manhole number one, I need to have a better home. So I'll come over here to new, add unit loading element to, I don't want manhole number two. I selected the wrong one. So I want to do this. New, add unit load to element MH1. I'm coming over here now. 
that I have a better home. And for a better home, I have two thousand. And then for the last item over here is manhole number two. I'm going to be adding in a residential hotel with a thousand uh, unit counts. So I'm going to click over here, add a unit load to manhole number two, which is going to be the residential hotel. And there it gives gives me a count of a thousand. So I should have three elements for manhole number one. So I got one, two, three, two for manhole number two. When I look at my pressure junction, I have one item, which should be the medium school. And then for my wet well, I will have a theater and then also a shopping center. So I have all those elements. So now I'm done with this over here. So now after all the loads have been applied, we can specify how those average loads relate to the peak flow. Extreme flows are defined by the extreme flows dialog box. So we're gonna be doing that. We can get out of this. And now we're going to go to components and extreme flows. So I'm coming over here and clicking the new and I want to have a equation population factor. I'm going to be putting in, and if you go down to the information in the quick start lesson, it gives you a formula for that. So we have over here is values. It has a cutoff value and others that you're going to be putting in. So my cutoff value is 5.123, and I have C1 is 0. I'm coming over here and... Leaving that as zero. C2 is 5.000. C3 is zero. And let me see. E1 is one. E2 is going to be 0.2. M1 is going to be zero and M2 is one. So I should have all the information set up as it specifies in the quick start lessons. And now I can close the extreme flows over here. So I've got all this specified as it says in the quick start lessons. Now I'm going to come over here to components and the extreme flow setups. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up <coughs> uh, sorry with the extreme flow setup I'm going to specify which extreme flow method is applied and any additional constraints. So now when I click new, I have all my items come up over here. And what I'm gonna do now is be able to specify how they're used. The first thing I need to do is I'm going to uh, rename the base extreme flow setup to, um, oh sorry, rename the setup to base extreme flow setup.
And I've got that done. And now I should be able to enter some of the information over here. So in order to make these all usable, I'm going to click all of these. And now I can be able to select the extreme flow method. So I could have come over and done a global edit if I wanted to by doing a right click. So I'm going to come over here and do a global edit. But before I can do that, I screwed up. I'm looking back at some of the material. So I'm going to close this one out. I have to go back to my extreme flows. I should have renamed the extreme flow as Babbit. So I'm going to come over here to components and extreme flows. And this one over here is rename. A, is rename that to Babbit. And I can close it out. Come over here to Components, Extreme Flow Setups. And I've got Global Edit. Select them all. And when I come over here, I should be able to do a Global Edit. I value and select Babbit. So now I've got that information entered in as it uh, corresponds to the quick start lesson. And what I want to do on all these is I have a constant and I have a multiplication factor. And these are all ones right now. So I'm going to look at what the lesson one wants me to change them to. And it is good as is, so I'm going to close that. Then my extreme flow setups are done. And I'm going to now run the model. If I've done everything correctly in the quick start lesson, it should run. So I'm going to come over here to the analysis and drop down to the calculation options. Let's see, calculation options, and I have as base calculation options. If I double click that, I now have my properties editor. And so I'm going to look at the settings that are used for this calculation option. So I want to make sure about this as I have it as steady state and analysis. So what I want to do now is I want to come down here to my extreme flow setup. And I want to change that. I have extreme flow set up. And now I can close my calculations dialog box here. I'm going to click the validate button. Get out of this. So I'm going to come over to my calculation center over here. I need to look at for validating it. And I've got a couple of error messages that I'm going to have to work with. So let's see what it's telling me. So for my first one, apparently I have misidentified the, or put in the wrong value for the invert elevation of my transition piece over here because it's telling me that it should be 12. So let me see. Oops, I don't want that. I need this one. 
and what did I do wrong over here is I should have a ground elevation of 12, invert elevation of 9.2, the top elevation. And when I look at this, I see that I have my invert set at 9.2 as a specified table 9.3. So let's see, what have I got here is conduit number two. And let's see, conduit number two. I should have a invert elevation. Let's see, does that match up with what the information I gave or did I mess it up? So perhaps it's not, I've got that information correct. Maybe I mis-entered the data for the wet well. And let me see about that information. So apparently I've got that done. I do remember that I had to make some adjustments to the flex table for the transition. So let me go back and look at that. Come down here to view and my flex tables. And I look at my conduit. That looks like what I put in there. So do I have for my what well? I don't see the errors here yet. I'm going to continue looking. I'm going to continue looking here. I did override the pressure pipe information when I went to the flex tables before. So I set invert to start. So I'm going to change that. And let's see if that remedies my problems. I'm going to run validate again. And apparently I'm still getting the same errors or warnings. So I'm gonna to continue to look here and find out what my problem is. What I found is that when I come over here to the wet well for my table over here, it just gives me the ground elevation I don't have all the other information in, so I was in the dialog box supposed to be specifying the base elevation, the minimum elevation, the initial elevation and such. So I'm going to edit those and I have my base elevation that I want to add in. And I want to have minimum elevation that I'm going to add in. And let's see, do I have got my base elevation, my minimum elevation, my initial elevation is over here, and my maximum elevation I should have in here. Let's see. So 
that I have maximum. So I should have, I have information here now. So I'm going to click OK because I've had those in. And so my base elevation, my minimum elevation is something that does not allow me to enter in here or my maximum elevation. So apparently I've had some problems getting those in. Let me see if I can enter those in. Double click on the high wet well. And I have specified my base elevation, my levels. But are those the operating range? I have my ground elevation. So apparently I have some problems with setting my elevations. Let me see if this helps out, does not allow me to set other elevations. I'm going to continue to troubleshoot this and looking for what the problem is. Apparently, it's with my wet well, because over here that I have my pump off and on, and my elevations are screwed up. Evidently, there's been some changes by Bentley to how they define some of the buttons and the selection that you make and I've been able to determine why we're getting these error messages. The first one has to do with the wet well. When you pull this one up I did enter the information that was given by the quick start lesson. Over here though in the lesson it has the elevations. Over here I have level so what it is doing is that the base of the wet well is at six meters. And if I specify level minimum at six meters, what it's saying is that it is allowing the water to rise to 12 meters so that when conduit number two is trying to have water flow through it, it is encountering a level of water or potentially the water level of water that is above what its invert is. So in this one over here, I need to change this to the, instead of having it six, if we let it be three, that will take care of that error. So that's one. Now I'm coming down over to the pump. And in the pump information that over here, we have ignore on and off elevations. Apparently, it doesn't like the fact that I did not specify any on and off elevations. So if I tell it for this modeling that we do not want it to worry about the on and off selections, the on and off switches would be in the wet well. If I do that, then I have specified material. I'm sorry, the information so that it allow it to run. So I'm coming back over here to validate it. And you see I have no validation issues now. And so when I will now go ahead and run and compute things, that it does do the analysis. It has successfully completed. What it does say is that based on the information that was provided, that the minimum velocity 
for conduit number three is not being met. Apparently there's not enough water being specified to go into that conduit. So conduit number three, this one does not have enough flow going into it. And there's also a minimum amount of cover uh, level that has to be in the system. And that's not being met either. So those are the issues that if we're willing to put up with those that we could go ahead and uh, accept that. And we could also go back and look at some of the buildings that uh, are supplying the water flow into the sanitary system here that we've designed. And that, but then we would have met the minimum cover and the minimum velocity constraints. But right now there's just not enough water flow in some of these. So uh, we've been successfully able to put the model together and to run it. It's just a few things that were changed uh, from what the quick start lesson specified and what the actual program of the model allows. So that concludes the Quick start lesson for sewer CAD and just give you a little bit of troubleshooting at the end in order to show how to correct some of these issues. These mirror messages over here are just little warnings uh, that you may want to change some of the design factors to get your minimum velocity and the minimum cover. Uh, they're not going to keep the model from running.